Well, anyway, looking on inside the railway arch was Adam Booth. He has been inseparable from David for a long, long time. This is not a normal boxing deal. These two actually changed the rules. They've rewritten the rule book. Fighter, trainer, partner, boxer, friend, whatever. Anyway, and a lot more. And I asked Adam how he and David came up with today's date of October the 13th. 2011, the date of David's 31st, not 30th or 32nd, but 31st birthday. I said 30, and then he extended it about a year and a half ago by saying, uh, it, as long as it's before my 31st birthday. So he, he, he was the one that came with this then. I said by 30. Do you think that it was kind of you, that he was forced in many ways to say he's retiring today, simply because we, you know, we've been working on this October 13th day for a long time? Um, no, because it was it, an ambition of his as well, um, that he doesn't want to go down the slippery road of, you know, getting damaged, mm. you know, and, and... That's big with you, isn't it? The idea that, you know, we've both seen too many fighters that apparently are okay, but they just go on too long. Then you see them ten years later, and you leave the meeting and you shake your head. And, and they haven't fought since. No. You know, you, you, you don't realise the effect that it has, and, and every punch to the head causes damage. What's the last thing a referee says to the fighters before the start of a fight? Protect yourself at all times. Protect yourself at all times. And as, and as a person, as a man, what is he doing it's now? He's protecting, protecting himself. himself. You seem pleased. I'm ecstatic. Hmm. Was there, was there, since the last fight, has there been, a, has there been any friction? Because people, people were saying, oh, when's he going to fight on? And you said, well, the October the 13th day is the cut-off date. Has there been any friction? Have you had any even mild disagreements with him over, over stopping? Well, who's disagreeing? I wanted no, to stop. Exactly, but, but, but has he sort of said to you, no, let, let, let's push well, he said, he, I mean, he, said, he has said something where he, he said, uh, you know, if, if Vitti wants to fight and they make him the right offer, yeah. he'll, de he'll postpone his retirement for six months. I didn't agree with that. I don't agree with that. But it's not. It's, I'm not him. He's got his own life to live. Sure. Um, I started off as his coach, um, and then sort of became a coach, sort of big brother relationship. But then over the years, um, the friendship, the friendship, as as you know, the things we've gone through together, yeah. the friendship has just been forged. And, and I consider myself his friend first now, um, which is difficult sometimes when we're training because yeah, when course. we're training, he doesn't need a friend; he needs a coach. Yeah. And so I have to I have to change the way I behave towards him. Don't see him outside the gym, so I only see him when and, and oh, that's interesting, it's not yeah. clouding. You know, because otherwise, you find that the day and you know if, if we're out laughing and joking and having a, a good day, and then we come to the gym and try and train, and he, he's not performing, it's it's not easy then to switch, switch and get his attention. So so whenever whenever it was time to go into training, I just stopped socialising with him, stopped seeing him outside, so I could perform that role, and I'm and, and I'm happy that I don't have to do that now. <laughs> so let's okay let let. For want of a, let's look at it this way. What if the Klitschko's come back and offer eight, offer David eight million to fight? He says, "I want to do it." He says, "Adam, I want to come back for that fight." Do you have a tough decision to make? Would I? Do you, working with him or not working with him? I, you know, I haven't, I haven't, and I haven't allowed myself to think about it. Um, part of me hopes that they don't offer him that. A big part of me hopes. Part that they of me don't. hopes they don't offer him anything yeah. that incites him. Um, but I can understand, I can understand why they might, because they have no option. But they haven't offered it. It's October the 13th. He's got a chocolate cake, and that's all <laughs> I care about at the moment. You know, this, and, and there's been this repeated process over the years where I have to go into that trainer mentality, yeah. so I have to not be his friend. Yeah. Because whatever he does in the gym, he's never going to be good enough for me, so I'm always going to be miserable towards him, because however good it is, he's never going to be good enough. I want it to be better. Well, now we can just laugh and joke and no, watch DVDs matter. and it don't watch other fights and it doesn't matter we can we can have fun with it what a great run Adam thanks buddy. thanks Steve <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah 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 that was um Adam Booth talking to me earlier and there was a bit of emotion in his voice but in my voice to be honest with you because those two have been working together for years and years before that of course uh, David worked with um, Mick Carney and Billy Webster at the Fitzroy Lodge Gym, just in fact, funny enough, in the same arch, but about 200 metres closer to Waterloo Station, so it's even fatter and there's even more trains, you can't do any interviews at the Fitzroy Lodge, so David Hay calls it a day, 31 years of age, there could be an offer from the Klitschko's, but it would have to be massive, he really fancies, he's got this bug, he wants to be an actor, ay, 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 anyway.